now. And this episode of Juice Guru Radio is brought to you by TriBest, making healthy living easy. And our 10-day gentle juice cleanse starts next Thursday, May 17th. Uh, that's in the year 2018. If you're watching a replay, sign up for free at gentlesummercleanse.com. Well, welcome. Welcome to Juice Guru Radio. Discover what the magic and power of juicing can do for you. And now, your host, best-selling author of The Complete Idiot's Guide to Juice Fasting, Steve Prusak. Well, hello. Welcome back. I'm Steve Prusak, and I'm so excited. We've got Mary Floor Toniato here. She's the author of Money, Manifestation, and Miracles, CEO and founder of Power with Soul, specializing in helping ambitious women, entrepreneurs, professionals, and leaders, and men to uh, reach financial prosperity and success while fulfilling their social promise in the world. So getting your message out. So get yourself a juice, some tea, some water. We'll be back right after this with Mary Flor Toniato. And welcome back to the show. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of our community. And thank you for all the love we get from you. I really mean that from the bottom of my heart. I'm um, Steve Prusak. I've got Mary Floor here. And like I said, her new book is Money, Manifestation, and Miracles, A Guide to Transforming Women's Relationship with Money. Such a hot topic. Money, money, money. Uh, you know, and people are, have a lot of hang-ups about money. But we're going to clear, clear the air, go deep. Her work has been featured internationally in media outfits like Yahoo Finance, Washington Post, International Business Times, Los Angeles Times, and, of course, right here on Juice Guru Radio. Where else? Visit her online at www.maryfloor.co. C-O. We'll have a link to that under the show notes at Juice Guru Radio. Or if you're in the Rewind, Juice Guru Rewind, of course, you're going to have that under the notes there, too. Let's welcome to our show right now, Mary Flor Toniato. Hello, hello. Thank you so much, Steve, for having me on. And I'm so excited to be talking about money manifestation and miracles. <laughs> I love it, Mary Florin. Thank you for being here. Congratulations on the book and the work you're doing to really transform lives. And, you know, why is it, do you think, why do people have such a hang up about money when it comes to money? It's almost like a taboo topic, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Like we were saying just uh, at the beginning, uh, it really still is a social, uh, a social faux pas almost if you, you know, start talking about it because of the fact that it is still too personal, still too deep for some people. I mean, it, we're here at 2018 and people talk about everything. We're seeing all these reality TV shows where people are talking about all their fears, everything. But if not too much about money, it's still very much a, a taboo subject. So what got you into this? What's your story for developing a skill to manifest more money and then sharing that with the world? Hey, to, you know, share your journey with us. Yeah, sure. So it pretty much started um, in my early 20s. I um, left a difficult marriage and I had this beautiful baby girl who was about four or five months old, and I had to build us a good life. I had to ha give her a beautiful role modeling and, and, you know, really move forward in life. And around that time, I was really nervous and fearful about money. And I was living from paycheck to paycheck. And I would go to bed some nights thinking, I'm really hoping that the rent check clears. So it was that kind of thing for me. And, um, and I remember, Steve, even in those darkest times, I remember making a promise to myself that if I ever was in a position to help empower women, especially around money, I would do it. But in those years, I had no clue, no clue what that was going to be, right? And um, over the years, I reinvented my life. I became very successful in corporate and, and um, all the trappings that come with that, including money. And then as I became an entrepreneur, I started working with women and I, all of a sudden, all of the conversation would sometimes go to money and a lot of fears around that or really reflecting some issues around self-confidence. And um, so I started to teach more about this. And then, and then even their uh, younger daughters, you know, 15 years old, around 17 would come and say, I'd really like to learn about that. And then I remembered all those years ago, that promise that I made that if I had an opportunity to empower women, especially around money, I would do it. So here we are. 
here we are manifesting this message into the world. So what do you think it is that holds women back, some men too, what's it that holds women back from greater wealth and success? If we're talking about women. Yes. Um, well, first of all, I do have to say that although this, is, this book is focused on women, men can definitely find value in reading it. And so I have to put that out there. But in terms of the what can hold women back, and um, I've really isolated it to um, self-confidence, Steve. It really can come back to that. And I am surprised that I have now worked with hundreds of women from all walks of life. And I'm still so surprised and fascinated by the fact that it doesn't matter the age, the educational level, the cultural background, or the income. Many women at some point in time will still privately struggle with valuing themselves and their worth. And, of course, this can impact getting to that next level of your career, of your business, of your income, or, or any next phase that you want in, in your life. And so this is why I'm so happy about this book, that it's out there, because it provides a step-by-step -step guide in taking the reader to look at what their money fears and blocks are. And then it gives them a path to addressing it so that they can get on with uh, – doing what it is they want to do and, and making an impact on the world. Where do you think those uh, fears come from? Is this like a societal thing or something from their upbringing? Or, where does this come from, this, this lowering of value? Well, it's both. I mean, from a societal point of view, I mean, if you really think about it, um, in, only in the last hundred years in, in Western um, cultures have women really had access to their own money. And, um, and then from, from um, childhood as well, right? So we, we all, both women and men, we hear all these interesting stories about some uh, tales that our parents, our families will talk about money that for most of the time isn't really uh, empowering. You know, things like you only will ever make great money if you work really, really hard for it. Or, you know, money doesn't grow on trees or you know, money is the root of all evil, all kinds of things that can happen that way, right? So it really can affect somebody. And um, I've had so many people and women tell me about stories that they've heard as, as children, as a child, that really impacted them later on. And um, is it okay if I share a specific story, Steve? No, that would be great. Okay. Um, so there's this one woman that told me that uh, she's the youngest uh, daughter and... Um, her two brothers uh, and her would get allowance every week from their father. And then as he gave out the money, she noticed that her portion was always less than her brother's. And so she asked, why is that? And he said, don't worry, dear. Your brothers are going to be the head of their families and you will not be. You, your husband will take care of you, essentially. Mm -hmm. And she took that story, you know, for years and years, and she said she was a perpetual under earner. She could, um, she had the talent, she was educated, she had the skills, but she somehow thought from that um, early conditioning that she can't make more than her husband. Until one day she thought, this is crazy. You know, I have an opportunity to do that and I'm going to do it. And it, it's, so, it's so fascinating that it could be both society and, of course, conditioning from, from our childhood as well. So if it's this mindset thing that's holding people back from, you know, manifesting money, bringing in more money, what are some of the first things we can do to start overcoming that to, first of all, be accepting of money and understanding its role that we all need money like we need everything else? Yes. Well, I mean, that's the very first point. I meant meaning like air and water, but like, you know, <laughs> yeah. we need shelter, but yes. we need money, don't we? Yeah, we really do. And it's an interesting, Steve, because you're absolutely right about the fact that we first have to start out with understanding the context of money within our lives. Uh, we all need uh, money to survive. That is, that is a kind of like a number one item here. If we're on the universe, we use money as the currency to trade in exchange for things that we need. And that's just the way it is. Um, but one of the things that we can start to do is we always 
want to turn inward. We want to look in, inward because we have all the answers, really, for ourselves. I mean, uh, we know ourselves the best, even if we don't want to admit it because we want to look for outside um, validation for that. But it's really interesting because once you start to turn inward, you're going to start and really get honest with yourself. You're going to start to identify kind of the patterns that you have around money. And, you know, ask yourself questions like, what, how does money exist in my life? I mean, I've had people tell me, I have a love-hate relationship with money or money comes, comes in and it goes right out again. You know, look at the patterns that, that you have around money and why that is. Where do you think that comes from? And, uh, and then as you're looking within and you're getting really honest with yourself, identify that specific area or block that you might have. It might be a fear. It might be a mindset. But you know that um, it's no longer serving you because of the fact that if you are hearing us, you're seeing us live, um, the fact is there are no coincidences, so that means it is time for you to release that. And at some point it served you, but it's no longer going to serve you. And now is the time to start developing more, more um, empowering mindset, more empowering actions, and one that's going to really take you and move you forward. Yeah, it's interesting. It's almost like limiting beliefs. I'll hear, you know, my, my bank account gets to a certain point and that's kind of where it stays no matter what. And it, it also, it's like people put up walls or barriers against getting beyond that, isn't it? Oh, very much so. You know, I even do this exercise uh, with clients where we look at kind of the pattern of their income. And it's interesting because especially, uh, I mean, I understand for people who um, are in jobs, you know, there's only a certain range in the income. But let's say if you're an entrepreneur, it's actually limitless. And what I found was interesting is even for myself, um, after I left um, corporate, I found that I was so comfortable at a certain level. And I would stay at that level until, you know, I kind of started to think, oh, what is this? It was only a belief that that's the level that I could reach. And, um, and then once I started to bust those beliefs, that's when things really started to, to increase in terms of income. Well, it's interesting. You say in the book, we're talking about the book, Money, Manifestation and Miracles. Uh, we're here with Mary Flora Toniato. And this book is actually available everywhere, Amazon, uh, bookstores worldwide which That's there right. are less, less and less bookstores, in the world. <laughs> but, but it is on Amazon. So you can get it there. Is that the best place, Mary Floor? Yes. Um, Barnes and Noble as well. It's in the uh, Indie Bound. Uh, and really, uh, it's, it's amazing because uh, I was looking at different places around the world and a lot of airports are carrying oh, them. <laughs> that's a great one. So it's a great place to read, you know. So, uh, yeah, but it is widely available. Now, you say, I, I love this, you say in here that um, there are universal and spiritual laws that govern financial prosperity and money. And can you give us a few examples of what you yeah. mean by this? Yes. So uh, when I, I was talking about uh, money, it's, uh, I didn't want to just talk about it from the point of view of just the relationship and that's it. Because there's so much more that we know, Steve, that's happening behind the scenes of this great universe and mm -hmm. that we are actually manifesting something good or, or something not so good every moment in our lives. And um, so I really had studied a lot and for myself and all of these uh, masters that have really uh, understood wealth and success. And, um, and so I thought, is there something that we can do that can help people to manifest with greater ease and grace? And so the universal and spiritual laws have existed since the beginning of time. And when we can tap into them, uh, it really helps us to move forward. So many of our listeners will probably under, uh, know about the secret and the law of attraction because many of people have heard about that like attracts like but there's also other um, universal laws that are at play for instance the the law of clarity so the law of clarity is a wonderful law because when you are very clear on exactly what it is that you desire and it's in alignment with your highest purpose 
There is no stopping you in doing that. And what's the interesting thing about that is, and if you can think back any time in your life, Steve, when you've really made that intentional commitment, you're going to do it. Um, it's interesting how the universe gets behind you in that all of a sudden resources, people, situations and opportunities all of a sudden start to line up for you to help you get to that goal. And if you think of that, we think of that as maybe happenstance, or I was lucky that that happened. And um, to some degree, perhaps, but it's really uh, luck meeting preparation and opportunity, because you've been ready for it, you've been winding yourself up for it. So, you know, for somebody, especially who wants to manifest more abundance into their life, the law of clarity is really, really um, one of the things that you need to pay attention to. And then there's another one I love to talk about. It's the law of giving and receiving. So we, we are great givers, especially women who are nurturers, and we want to give, give, give all the time. And one of the beautiful things about giving is to really understand that it creates a vacuum for the opportunity to receive. And um, that means that when you're giving something to somebody, is it your time, uh, your effort, or, or even uh, money, that that good and that abundance can also come back to you in the way that you need it the most. Now, it may not come back to you through the same person because they may not give you anything. It may not come to you at that very moment, or it may come to you in a completely different way. But the whole point of that is that you are part of the the flow in the circle of abundance so when you talk about getting clear you know someone might think about their life purpose are they doing the work they're meant to be doing are they in alignment and, and everything like that and is it when we get into that state that we are doing what we're supposed to be doing what we're you know that that could be a lifelong question but is that once we start when you say getting clear is that part of it though Oh, exactly. Yes, it is. Because there's, there's actually a chapter in one of the principles I talk about in the book is that clarity leads to alignment. And that's exactly right. it. I mean, the whole thing that we are here for a purpose. And we know that. And one of the things that we are, are doing in moving forward with our lives is identifying not only what it is our purpose is, but what about our natural strengths? What, it, what is it that comes to us so beautifully and naturally and that we love to do? We have been gifted with that skill and that talent. And are we taking the time to nurture that? Are we um, understanding, you know, what it is that really makes us come alive? And how can we then align all of that, align the, the purpose What's our mission? What's our strengths? How do we want to contribute? When all of those can come into alignment, you are looking at really living a much more meaningful and fulfilled life. And where money comes into that is that money is often required to fulfill our life's mission. And especially if, let's say, you have a really big platform because you have a really big message, money is going to play into that. And money is, is part of actually what I say in the book. Money is part of your spiritual purpose. It's interesting because even right here in the Juice Guru community, I hear I had a post up the other day about organic, you know, eat organic, um, you know, eat now so you don't have to pay the hospital bills later. And it was interesting how it triggered uh, some people to say, yeah, that's nice for all you people that can afford it, but I can't even pay the bills. And I, it, went, it kind of devolved into this idea that, you know, it's nice for you people that can afford that kind of food, but what about those that can? And a lot of negative self-talk around money and how much money that the person had and things like that. How, I mean, how, how harmful is that negative talk about our financial state? Well, it's really, it can be harmful from a, an individual uh, point of view, um, Steve, because of the fact that what we fo focus on grows. So the more we focus on uh, negativity, the more we are going to see more examples of that in our lives. And what ends up happening is um, 
it's like a snowball effect, right? If you're looking at one thing, because what we do, we're so smart as human beings is that we have this belief, uh, let's say in scarcity that, oh, it's great for you. Like you're saying in your example, it's great for you that you can afford organics. And then you people start to look for evidence outside of themselves to make that belief true, to validate that belief. You see, so-and-so doesn't have any money. They can't do this, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And yet it only takes a fraction to, of a second to switch and say, I choose. Choosing is free, by the way. I choose to uh, look at the abundance I choose to look at the positive and start looking for clues in your life. Um, And I promise you, because I have been there, it will snowball into something else. It will snowball into abundance. Um, And remember at the very beginning of our, our conversation, when I talked about when I was living from paycheck to paycheck, I could have stayed there, Steve. If I had that mindset, I could have stayed there and it could have gotten worse. I chose, it was a very, very strategic move. I chose in, a, in an instant. That's not, I chose to be successful, actually, is what I said to myself. And so that was inevitable. Inevitable. It was going to happen. Well, this is exciting. So I, I think all of us here are ready to make that step and, and, and manifest and change the mindset and make it happen. And so... Yeah. How can we start, you know, you're going to share some processes to, to start incorporating this and, and manifesting more abundance into our life. And this is going to be exciting. And I have to agree in my own life, everything you're saying is so spot on. And, and I've been there where you've been too. And, and I, I turned it all around with mindset. But I, I'm so excited to see how we can all start to use some of your processes. Okay, sure. Well, so for instance, mindset is huge because we're talking about mindset anyways. Um, And I call mindset the prelude to action because your mindset is really going to impact your decision and your action. And one of the things with mindset, a lot of people may think that it's difficult to shift and actually it's not. And uh, in the book, I talk about a process, which is basically choose a belief that's no longer serving you. So maybe, you know, let's pick a belief where um, money is the root of all evil or, or something like that, or money doesn't grow on trees. So if that belief, how is that impacting your life? Chances are, if you're thinking that money doesn't grow on trees, there's this pessimistic aspect that you may have an outlook of how money can come into your life. And maybe you're thinking that if you have a job, only you can get money only from that source. And so if what could you do, what next belief or a better belief could you choose that will all of a sudden make you feel expansive? So, for instance, if somebody is thinking that money doesn't grow on trees, what if you had this new belief that says, you know what, the world is so abundant and money can come to me in many forms, okay? And so, as soon as you have that belief, check in with how you're feeling. And I bet you're going to feel much more expansive because of the fact that you ask yourself the question, what if? And we love to do that because we love to imagine then all of a sudden, what's happening is that you're, you're having this expansive feeling. And then when you say, I'd, l- I'd like to step into this new belief. So then ask yourself, what belief then do I need to release to get from that point A to point B? That's the gap in the middle. And so what's the belief that you have to re- release is that money, can, uh, money is uh, the root of all evil. Maybe that's no longer serving you. So release that belief. And uh, it's that kind of process, Steve. You know, it's um, for the next little while, if that's not something that you're used to doing, there's going to be a a tennis match happening in your head, (laughs) you know, um, from uh, like the tennis ball going from one end to the other. And that's okay. You're building your muscle. You're building a mindset where you're choosing this, uh, a different thing. And what you're really doing at the end of all of this is you're raising your vibration to match the exact thing that you desire. Because usually for us to to manifest what it is that we desire, we have to do something that's different to what we have been doing. Because otherwise we would have already had it. 
Some people might say, you know, I might want, you know, change that, that pattern and I might want that, but not really believe it. I mean, did you have to really believe it? Like, does that, you know, how much, how important is it to actually believe the new mindset? Because you might be just going through the motions of saying it. Yes, that's very true as well. Um, so it, it's a stair-stepping type of situation too, uh, Steve, where you can, sometimes people can't just jump from one thing to the other because it's such a big jump. So you do have to believe, first of all, that things, this is possible. And if you look at, in terms of abundance, if you look at um, so many people in, um, that we know of who are, who are famous that may have started in, in a situation that um, wasn't exactly abundant, but they completely turned it around. You know, I'm thinking of, of, of Oprah, for instance, who had a really, you know, difficult childhood and, and look at her now, right? So sometimes we have to have the conviction that something is possible. And then we start to really... Um, look for ways and act in ways that we can believe it. And one of the things is uh, a fun thing to do is to act as if you've already gotten there. And I don't mean to act, you know, sometimes people say fake it till you make it. Right. And that's not, that's a separate thing because if, if you're already talking about the word fake, you already don't believe it. I'm talking about the fact of acting as if, you're already abundant. Try that on. See how you start to feel with that. Because what we're doing here is we're trying to help you attract and shift and grow and expand your way of being. And so this takes time. It's not overnight. Um, but I have in this book a lot of shortcuts that I have learned and my clients have learned that can really help people move forward. And uh, that's why I'm so excited to be sharing it. Very exciting. And it's interesting because we share the idea of juicing and how great that is for your body. And there's all these studies to back it up. But then I always say, there's still things in that juice that science hasn't discovered and that, you know, there's something in that liquid sunshine that we don't know what it is. But it's the same thing with the human brain, isn't it? Because we only use some of our brain capacity and it's incredible how powerful our thought patterns are of what we can actually create in our reality, isn't it? Oh my God, it really, really is. And, um, and you know, we take for granted the fact that we are really, really powerful. And um, because we're always, we're always kind of, uh, you know, we're, I think we've been really taught to be humble. Of course, that's important and all of that. Uh, at the same time, though, Steve, it's, um, it's really so important for us to understand that within us lies all the abundance, you know, because within us is the, the opportunity, the creativity to really unleash that. And uh, anybody listening right now, there is a, you, there's something so unique and creative about you. And if you can tap into that, and, uh, and if you love to do something like that, let it be part of uh, the service and the contribution that you make and let, let abundance come into you through that way as well. Love it. Just focus on that. Um, and you talk in the book about the uh, money gratitude journal. Uh, why should we keep one of those? And what, what exactly is it? Yes. So Money Gratitude Journal is, uh, I think a lot of people listening to us, seeing us here, know about gratitude journals, you know, writing in a journal what we're grateful for. So I took that same concept and uh, I combined it with what if we were grateful about what the money that comes into our lives? What if we're grateful about abundance and of wealth? And what can come, what else can come in? <clears throat> excuse me, what else can come in? And so I started to do that for myself. And I started uh, getting these great, great results, um, you know, from, from little things, uh, Steve, from like winning more um, drinks in coffee shops <laughs> and, you know, getting free gift cards to manifesting um, greater abundance. I remember one day I was thinking, I was really focused on getting this bold money goal. 
because it really represented something big for me. And I was thinking it was a very specific number. It was just under six figures, I remember. And uh, I thought, where is that going to happen? Where am I going to have that? And I'm looking, I'm thinking about it. And do you know, a day later, I finally looked on the part of my desk that I hadn't opened some mail. And in there was the same exact amount for a, uh, a proposal for a contract I had submitted months ago and forgot about. So, you know, I, I mean, that, that can seem like a really, really big thing for people uh, listening to us. But what I'm saying is start small. Look for the opportunities because one of the things about gratitude, again, once you focus on something, you're going to see more and more of it. And actually, there is scientific proof that gratitude not only works for expanding your, um, your outlook and, uh, and your, your um, confidence, it also works from the point of view of expanding your health and well-being as well. And so that's one of the things that I love to to get my clients to do is to really start looking for all the things that you can be grateful for. Like for instance, I am so so grateful that you and I are having this conversation and that this great universe had us meet on this path. You know how beautiful is that? That's incredible. So blessed. This is so exciting. Again, it's Mary Fleur Toniato. She's here at Juice Guru Radio. Again, her website, I'm going to put it up. It's uh, maryfleur.co. We'll have a link to that under the show notes at juicegururadio.com. We're getting ready to close out the iHeartRadio part of the show and open up questions to the Juice Guru Rewind, those that are in our community, so you guys can get your questions answered as part of the Juice Guru Rewind uh, as part of our Gentle Summer Cleanse at gentlesummercleanse.com. So we'll have all those links under Juice Guru Radio. And if you want to watch us live, go to JuiceGuruTribe.com. JuiceGuruTribe.com, that's where we do the shows live, and you can be part of the green room there, the studio audience. Uh, Mary Fleur, thank you again for being here. Anything to say in closing to touch on how we can clear those emotional blocks around money, how we can start manifesting more money, anything to say to our viewers and listeners before we close out the radio portion? Sure. Just that now is your time. There are no coincidences. So take what we've been talking about. Start, look inward. Start applying it. Nourishingly apply what's the steps that are in this book. And when you do that, you can claim your wealth and rise as a force for good in the world. Thank you so much for being here. Mary, Mary Fortuniato right here on Just Radio. Mary Fleur, thank you. For bl- much blessings to you. Thank you for the work you're doing. Thank you. Thank you so much, too, and for so you as well. Here. I'm Steve Prusak, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Juice Guru Radio. Find out more about us at juiceguru.com. Until next time, get your juice on.